Hello everyone, welcome to Tech TBA. In today's episode of Accelerator Tech Talk series, we are going to talk about the cell offload and smart scan feature of Oracle Accelerator Storage Server. And many thanks for all your kind support and motivation for this channel Tech TBA. If you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe and continue your support. And I request you to ask more questions under Ask Tech TBA. In our previous episodes, we have talked about the various components of Oracle Xerata and very importantly, the secret sauce of Oracle Xerata, which is the storage server. The reason why, because almost all the features of Oracle Xerata rely on the storage servers. That includes the smart flash cache, hybrid columnar compression, storage indexes, and Xerata cell offloading and a smart scan. So what is the Xerata cell offload? In a simple term, the cell offload is nothing but offloading the resource intensive workload from the database node back to the storage node. In a conventional architecture, you have a database server which is hosting with your instance as well as the storage mechanism, be it a file system or an ASM. So whenever there is a database calls that passes through the CPU back to the storage and then the storage reverts the data back to the database instance. The problem with this is the data passes through a narrow CPU tunnel whereas the CPU capacity is very limited and in order to increase the CPU capacity you need to pay a lot of cost. So many a times DBS encounter the high CPU wait time that impacts the performance of the applications. In Oracle Accelerator, Oracle moved the storage components exclusively into a storage server. Still you can ask you have a CPU tunnel across which has to pass through the data then how can we improve the database performance? The answer comes is the IDB protocol. In a conventional architecture, the database storage does not have any idea what is the type of data which gets stored because at the storage level everything is a block storage. Whereas in Oracle Xerata, the Xerata storage server very well understood what is the type of data that gets stored, what is the minimum values, what is the maximum values, all those things are understood by the Xerata storage server. So whenever there is a database transaction comes in, the IDB protocol directly communicates to the Xerata storage server and then the Xerata storage server gets the required blocks back to the database server. So whenever there is a call happening to the Oracle database, the call directly passes through the storage server and then the storage server filter out what is the required data blocks and it gets back to the database server. So the CPU wait time on the database server is very much reduced. That improves the performance of the database enormously. Now let's see what is the Xerata Smart Scan. The Xerata Smart Scan is nothing but it's a capability to offload the SQL processing from the database server to the storage server. Say for example, I'm running a select statement on an employee table, then that particular operations will be directly forwarded to the storage server through the IDB protocol and the storage server will identify what are the required blocks which is holding the data of the employee table and then it pulls the data back to the database server. So the resource contention on the CPU is very much reduced on the database server and the performance also improved. The smart scan works in three functionalities. One is the predicate filtering and the other one is a column projection and the third one is a joint filtering. We will review this one by one. The predicate filtering is nothing but a statement which has a var condition which pulls a subset of the data. Consider an employee table which is having about 5 million records and the department of ABC is having only 1 million records. So we are going to pull only 1 million records out of the total of 5 million records. In a conventional architecture, the select statement goes to the database instance which identify what are all the required blocks based on the table metadata and then the call goes to the CPU of the database server. Then it passes through the storage where the storage will pull all the 5 million records from the storage layer and then it will pass through a narrow CPU tunnel back to the database server. Then the database will identify what is the required blocks needed for the end user and then that particular data which will be get back to the user. So here we just need only 1 million records but all the 5 million records has to be pulled out of the storage and it has to pass through a narrow CPU tunnel 
and put it in the database memory whereas the database memory also has to process all the 5 million records to identify what is the 1 million record that is needed for the end user. This improves the high CPU I.O. as well as the user I.O. weight events. Now we will see the same operations performed in Exadata using a smart scan. In Exadata, the select statement directly forwarded to the database storage server through the IDB protocol and the storage server identify what is the 1 million record that is requested by the end user and pulls the data only for that 1 million records back to the database instance. The database instance need not to do any filtration and gives the output directly to the end user. So the CPU and the IO weight event on the database is completely reduced. Now let's see how the column projection works with the smart scan. Consider the employee table which is having about 5 million records. I am interested only on the employee ID and the name columns of the employee table. As I told in the conventional architecture, the entire data irrespective of the rows or the column requested are pulled to the database instance and the database instance has to do all the operations. Whereas in Exadata, the select statement is passed directly to the storage server and the storage servers even identify what is the columns that are being requested and pull only the requested columns back to the database instance. So it is as simple as you execute a SQL statement directly on a storage server and the database instance has to do no work and straight away get the data back to the end user. So you might ask this smart scan feature perfectly works with the transaction database where we only execute a simple select or insert statements. But what about a data warehouse environment which has complex table joins and the filtering operations on a huge tables. The Exerata smart scan works on the join filtering as well using the bloom filtering functionality enabled within the storage server. So even here the entire select statement passes through the storage server and then the storage servers will do the filtering and the join operations internally within the storage servers and then only the output of data will be passed to the database and the database passes the same to the end user. So here the enormous database I.O. operations and the data passing through a narrow CPU tunnel is all reduced in Exadata. This is the main reason why Exadata can able to produce enormous database performance improvement compared to any other appliance in the market. Now we will see what are the prerequisites for the Exadata smart scan and how to identify whether the query is using a smart scan or not. The first requisite is the query must undergo a full table scan in order to have a smart scan enabled. In case if you are using a specific index or a hint to be used then it will impact the Exadata smart scan functionality. The second one is the underscore serial direct read is set to always. And the third one is the cell offload processing parameter is set to true. These two parameters will make the database directly read from the storage server as well as this particular database operations can be offloaded to the storage servers. If you take an explain plan of your query, you can see the term called table access storage full that means that your query using a smart scan functionality. You can also identify the same using v$ session stat where you can see the total eligible bytes for the cell offload as well as you can see the physical IO interconnect bytes written by the smart scan. For this particular query, you can see about 1.8 GB of data that is eligible for the cell offloading and 667 MB returned by the smart scan back to the storage server. So out of the total table data of 1.8 GB, only 600 MB returned by the smart scan which satisfy the requested criteria specified in the query. So but we are saving about 65% of reduction in database I.O. as well as the other resources used to satisfy this particular operation. Here is a quick summary about our discussion today. The cell offload is a capability of Oracle Exerata 
to delegate the resource intensive workloads like backups and the sql operations from the database server to the storage server the smart scan is a sub functionality of cell offload which delegates the sql processing from the database server to the storage server this works with predicate filtering column projection and join filtering in the predicate filtering only the requested data that is pulled out from the exadata storage server in the join filtering the exadata storage server can join multiple tables and filter the requested data using a bloom filter and it can return the only the requested data back to the database server to enable the smart scan the query must undergo the full table scan and also underscore serial underscore direct underscore read is set to always and cell offload processing is set to true if you take an explain plan of the query and if you see something like table access storage full then you can understand the query undergo a smart scan you can also get the data by using p dollar session stats where it will show the total eligible bytes io as well as the eligible bytes returned by the smart scan features so i hope this video finds useful to you to understand what an oracle exadata smart scan and in our next video we will talk about hybrid columnar compression and storage indexes your likes and the subscriptions helps me to run more and more towards the finishing line so please like this video subscribe to tech tba if you are not done already and press the bell icon and also share this video on all the social media and visit my blog site write to me for any queries and i'll be answer all all your questions on ask tech tba thank you